you find yourself lost in Irving Land. <laughs> Daffy Duck once called himself a greedy slob. He said it was his hobby. I'm pretty sure he learned it from Dr. Smith. A world ransom in jewels. Now what to do with it? Where? They seem to end up in similar situations too. Will has to help him take it off because it won't release him, but Will can't see any problems with it. There is no danger in this object for the boy. Quiet, you disreputable dunce. Why didn't you help me in my hour of need? Hey look, Dr. Smith, it fits. Take it off, my boy. Take it off! <laughs> Now you did it, you summoned John Williams. I have Nexus of Andronica. My companions and I have crossed 90 light years of space, seeking a being worthy to wear that crown. And at last we have found him. All hail our majesty. Will is their new king? They always find a king from off planet to avoid inbreeding or something like that. It's a little fuzzy. Will says, no thanks. Well, look. If I became their king, I'd have to leave my family. And I couldn't do that. Of course you could. Take them with you. No. It is impossible. I see. Will! Would you excuse us, please? Yeah, sure, Dr. Smith. And take him with you. So far, nobody's asked what being king of Andronica means or entails, but it's obvious that Dr. Smith is concocting another greedy slob scheme in his head, so let's get it over with. Suppose the boy continues to refuse, then we must select another candidate. One of sublime intelligence, extraordinary valor, judicial wisdom, and royal bearing. I wonder who Dr. Smith has in mind. Oh, by the way, I should mention that I am Irish on my maternal grandmother's side. So am I. So what? Is that important? Only in as much as all the Irish are descended from kings. Gosh, I had no idea I was a royal lineage. That's certainly useful for what I do here. Master, the first contact has been highly successful. The ruse seems certain to work. The wolf man? Really? What's he look like when the moon isn't full? I mean, I wouldn't want to be a king anyway. There's no fun in it. Well, of course there isn't. And in the meantime, I don't believe that we should mention anything about this matter to the others. If it only caused needless alarm, let it remain our little secret. Any time Dr. Smith says that, the first thing he should do is go running to his parents and tell them everything. I don't know, Dr. Smith. Dad and Don ought to know that there are aliens on this planet. Well, of course they should, but all in due time. Just leave it to me, my boy. Will? Promise. All right. But please, Dr. Smith, don't start your tricks again. You always get in trouble. Indeed. Prove him wrong. Point to one, just one of your underhanded, self-absorbed schemes that has worked. We'll wait. It's pretty bad when the youngest member of the party knows how predictable you are. Good evening, Dr. Smith. We were not expecting you so soon. I thought I would bring you the report tonight. I knew you would be most eager to get it. Of course, according to his report, there's only one member of their crew who's qualified to be King of Andronica. All hail Zachary I. A great deal. Uh, oh! Nixus. Your king has a very delicate back. Oh. The pain, the pain. It might go easier on you if you didn't wear that 10-ton robe, but Zachary Smith's middle name is Overboard. His most exalted majesty, defender of rights, sword and buckler of liberties, 
most sublime and willing sacrifice, Zachary the First, King of Andronica. They all missed one of those titles, and I'm betting you didn't, because we've been expecting it since they appeared on the planet. Come on, Smith, get out of that chair. You're making a fool of yourself. God, fetch us Jan Varlet's head. Unwise to provoke an incident too vast. What? What? Do you see any guards, especially guards capable of taking on Major West? But as I said, Zachary Smith's middle name is Delusions of Grandeur. Enough. The audience is ended. <laughs> You have to wonder if the Andronicans always treat their kings like this, or if they have any idea how he came up with all this crap. Come, come, Nexus, our royal throats are dry. Don't stop fanning. Do you hear me? Get on with it. It's time for His Majesty to meet his host. Won't somebody speak? Your Majesty. Oh, thank heavens, not everybody is in this ridiculous position and condition. Now, what has happened to these? <laughs> at last, something Dr. Smith is good at. No! No! How is Your Majesty feeling? Go away! So, you do not like the looks of your devoted subjects, huh? Subject. I am Andronican. You are king of Andronica. Nexus and the others are androids that he made especially to get Dr. Smith to agree to be king. Then I am really the king? Oh yes, you are king for festival of sacrifice. It's the biggest celebration in the Andronican system. Everybody's there. Drink glug, make Slimoth very happy. Sacrifice king so everybody be happy. Well, prosperous in year to come. Sacrifice the king. Skin him. Stuff him. Very good stuffing. <laughs> Last many years. Ten thousand years from now, you look same. <laughs> Stand in hall of immortal kings. Very great honor. Now I want a stuffed smith for Christmas. I wonder if I could call the trader and make a deal. We will see what your friends are doing. <laughs> Well, I guess that's the last we'll see of Dr. Smith. Oh, what a callous dismissal of one who has shared the dangers and vicissitudes of their daily life. You mean the one who caused most of those challenges and vicissitudes? I can't help feeling worried about him. Oh, dear and gracious lady. Well, wherever he's going, you can bet Smith will land on his feet. Knowing him, he'll break an ankle and fall on his face, but initially he'll land on his feet. Correction. Dr. Smith will not depart. What do you mean by that? Acting under Prime Directive, I made certain alien communications to his mothership will not function. The robot had issues with his analysis of the aliens and their practices, and he suspected that some primitive sacrificial rites were involved. His Prime Directive is to protect human life, so he took steps to protect Dr. Smith, even against his will. You see? They're suspicious of you. Highly suspicious. They'll never let you go while you're holding me like this. Never? What are you doing? Your people want Smith. I give them Smith. Yes, he's going to put Dr. Smith into the machine and make a copy of him to give to the Robinson family. Professor Robinson, Major West, and Will go to the Andronican ship and issue their demand. Send Dr. Smith out to us or we blow a hole in the door and come in and get him. Smith, are you all right? But of course I'm all right, dear fellow. There's really no cause for alarm, none at all. They'll never buy that. I was worried about you, Dr. Smith. Dear little friend, of course you were, but quite unnecessarily. Little fool! Can't you see he's a fraud? Why did they let you go? It was my own decision. I decided that ruling a kingdom as vast as Andronica was far beyond my poor capabilities. That has to be Dr. Smith, because as we all know, his middle name is Humility. And the hints keep coming.
Now, which one of you girls did this? Neither. It was Dr. Smith. Oh, good heavens, half the day is gone and nothing being done. I do hope you ladies don't mind that I undertook to prepare the breakfast. Oh, did you do all this? Now, come along, my dears. Do sit down, madam. Right. Do sit down. They're buying that this is their Dr. Smith who's just suddenly turned over a new leaf? That has to be a stretch even for Will and Maureen, the two people who refuse to give up on him. He's a bundle of energy working on the water line and anything else he can do. Well, what's going on here? Well, Dr. Smith prepared breakfast. Oh, please, please, dear lady, let us not be formal. Why don't you just call me Zack? Zack? Zack. <laughs> Well, okay, that's the way you want it, Zach. Thank you, dear, dear Major. Do sit down and have your breakfast. Even worse, later he wants Will to start calling him Daddy Zach. Daddy Zach? Yes, Daddy Zach. I feel like a second father to you. Will is officially creeped out now. Nothing computes anymore. What do you mean, my dear fellow? You have changed. Yes, I have. And for the best. Don't you agree? I will have to re-examine my tapes before I can answer that. Something I don't get. When Nexus was approaching the ship, the robot called him an alien artifact. That means he could detect that Nexus was an android. Why isn't he detecting the same thing about Dr. Smith? Instead, Will says, what did they do to you in that ship? My memory banks do not identify you as Dr. Zachary Smith. Do I look like Dr. Smith? You stand like Dr. Smith. Do I talk like Dr. Smith? The tonal quality is identical. Then I must be Dr. Smith. That does not necessarily compute. Scan his internal workings. Do they look like Dr. Smith? Speaking of whom, he's still trying to talk our friend into appointing someone else king. He says, I'm not a very good person, you know. We know. We know all the time. All the time? We set out bait for you. For me? But the crown rejected me when I first put it on. Make you want it more. Make you lie, betray your friends to become king. You pass test for kind of king we want. They want their king to be the Daffy Duck type. You are useless creature. They are useful creatures. It is wasteful to sacrifice useful creatures as king. You mean you select your kings because they're useless? Sure. Nobody missed them. Ouch. If he can prove that Will is going to miss him, will they let him go? But you must give me an opportunity to turn over a new leaf. I'll prove myself. I shall be a new Smith. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. I'll take regular flea baths and won't pee on the carpet. I won't chase the cat, and I'll do my best not to shed. His captor says, they already have a Smith like that. I make that good man from essence a bad one. He is you but without your faults. He will be a useful creature. He's not wrong about that, but I'm not sure he has the right to make that decision. <laughs> Neither is Dr. Smith. He gets away and runs screaming back to the Jupiter 2. Help! Save me! Ladies, ladies, I'm in the most perilous condition. You must help me. I am literally running to save my skin. Time is of the essence. What's wrong, Uncle Zach? Don't call me Zach! Take, take Dr. Smith inside. No, no, no. I must flee. There is no safety for me here. Then why did you come here? Well, do as I say. Now, look, you're going to be all right. No. You're going to be safe. No, 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 no. no. Now we have two Dr. Smiths. Correction, you have one Dr. Smith and one Daddy Zack. A Daddy Zack who can't help pointing out what a horrible person Dr. Smith is. I mean that you are shiftless, unreliable, cowardly, two-faced, and a liar. Shall I go on? I shall not remain to hear myself insulted. Gee, I wonder which one is the real, original, genuine Dr. Smith. Frankly, I don't think there's room in this group for two Dr. Smiths. I couldn't agree more. You'll have to get rid of him. Well, you certainly don't want him around, do you? He is our friend, and he was here first. The android says, but I'm a much better version of him. You see, I was created from the essence of the original Smith, with a few of his worst characteristics omitted. But I am just as much Zachary Smith as he is. No, you're not. Those flaws that Lon Chaney Jr. left out of you are part of what makes him Zachary Smith. As we've noted, his middle name is Ambition. 
Try to imagine the series so far with Daddy Zack instead of Dr. Smith. I foresee early cancellation due to boredom. No, as flawed as he is, as many times as he'll stab them in the back the way he did with the robot last time, Dr. Smith has been the catalyst for some of the things they've learned to do to help them survive. Without his screw-ups, they wouldn't know half the things they do about living on this planet. His middle name may be selfish, but they need him. And with all his faults, Zach, Dr. Zachary Smith is our friend. We don't want to lose him. I don't think he saw that coming. Later, he and Dr. Smith are talking. Dr. Smith says, You can't stand by and let that creature take me and kill me, can you? The copy says, What can I do? We are very similar. You could take my place. But why should I? Because I'm human. So am I. But I'm the original Zachary Smith. The one with all the virtues, petty faults, weaknesses, and small evils such as cowardice. While you are without fault. Oh, my dear sir. Surely you realize that sacrifice is more in your line than mine. Think it over. I have to admit, it's hard to find a flaw in that reasoning. Danger! Danger! Red alert! Red alert! Ugh. Everybody in the universe knows where his power pack is. They need to fix that. Smith, you better knock it off. I'm expecting an attack. But I have nothing to fear. The alien doesn't want me. But still, I don't feel justified in taking up arms against him who, in effect, was my creator. Therefore, I shall continue to work. All right. Have it your way. It's hard to argue with that logic, too. Mr. Spock would be proud of this episode. Someone please teach us poor dumb humans how to do that. We're starting to feel alone in the universe. The androids walk right through the force field. I was a teenage werewolf, says Surrender Smith now. Maybe I can stop with this. Stop! Stop! It's no use, my friends. The end is inevitable. They will overwhelm your defenses and drag me off. Well, do you have any other suggestions then, Dr. Smith? I will go out and surrender to them. And he does just that. Fetch me my royal crown and raiment. If you must take me, I shall go as your king. They tried to take him away, but the third time he collapsed under the weight of that robe, they let him go. They're gone. They took him. Certainly not. There. Ah, enough of this masquerade. I guess Daddy Zack thought it over. Daddy Zack? Daddy Zack indeed. I never want to hear that revolting name ever again in my presence. <laughs> now that's the real Dr. Smith. You are Smith. Yes. Yeah. Of course I am. Did you think for one moment that I would go off to an uncertain fate in an alien world? Well, Don did say whatever happened to Smith, he'd land on his feet. If it's any comfort to you, Major, both I and my alter ego are quite certain that nothing dreadful will happen to him. You see, the Andronicans have a horror of waste. And as soon as they realize that he's really a very useful sort, they will alter their plans and release him. Daddy Zack. Both incarnations tend to land on their feet. Sometime later, Dr. Smith, Penny, and Will are making a time capsule to bury on this planet. This is something of yours, Dr. Smith. Ah? Ah, this is more like it. Meditations of a galactic castaway, being an account of the courage, fortitude, and personal sacrifice of Dr. Zachary Smith. I shall undoubtedly be named to the Space Voyager's Hall of Fame when posterity learns of my brilliance, my courage, my... What was that? My brilliance, my courage, my shorts are wet. Dr. Smith has worked himself into a tizzy because he's sure it's a werewolf. Let's ask the robot. I identify animal noises, robot. Animal noises produced by Predator Hannes Lupus. Volume and pitch indicate Predator to be in condition of extreme ferocity. Canis Lupus? Yes, Canis Lupus. Werewolves! Wrong again, greatest mind in the universe. Canis Lupus is the scientific name for the common wolf. Not werewolf, just wolf. 
Now, robot, please explain how in the name of King Zachary's crown a wolf got here. <laughs> Or maybe it's great grandpappy when he hasn't shaved in six months. Space werewolves look kind of dorky. That Andronican was more convincing and he's just a regular guy. We've had two episodes in a row about people trying to own other people. Keep in mind, the Civil Rights Act is only about two years old and the grumpy old farts who spoke for the white status quo still didn't like it. I remember listening to my dad's friends tell jokes like, I have nothing against blacks, I think every white person should own at least one. Mid-60s, coming up on flower power and the hippie generation and all the rest. But there was a long way to go. Shows like this tried to help where they could. Even if they can't build a decent werewolf. I'll see you next time you find yourself lost in Irvingland.